NFR Extra follows all your favorite cowboys, interviews legends of rodeo, and talks to the best of country music. Follow Nevada Caldwell, Ryland Bentley, and Steve Godert every week as they delve deep into the stories behind the road to gold in Vegas at the National Finals Rodeo. It's revealing, comedic, and sometimes emotional. Find it on Spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts. NFR Extra. All dirt, all rodeo, all year. Dodge City, Kansas in 2019. I just came off the win in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I was number one in the world in the all around, number one in the world in the bull riding. I would just moved into the top 15. I was like 13 in the world in the bronc riding. I was just finally finding my groove in the bronc riding. And I went to Dodge City and I had this bull. I rode him and won the round with my get off. I, my hands hung in my rope for just a second and his horn came up under my face mask and shattered my jaw in five different places knocked my four bottom teeth out. I mean, at the time I was, I, I probably should have handled a little different. I was more so playing the poor picked on me card and around my house that don't fly. Like <laughs> my dad put an end to it and he said, you'll understand why it happened in the end. And at the time I was like, what are you talking about? Like, what, what am I gonna understand from this? Well, in 2019 when I walked out of the NFR holding that gold buckle the all around, I, I knew exactly what he was talking about and it, it made it that much more special to win just because it wasn't just a perfect season. There was trials yeah. and errors and injuries. Yeah. It was it was all worth it. NFR Extra, episode 102. This concludes part three of our three-part series with the 2020 Wrangler NFR champions from the top of Circa inside the Legacy Club in downtown Las Vegas. We found all the right reasons to have brothers Ryder and Stetson join us on NFR Extra to talk about their early success, traveling together, and the NFR in Las Vegas. This is the one that lights the fireworks a little early. Oh, absolutely. Steve, you said that we got a one-up, right? So that, I mean, like, if we run up the money, Cowboy Channel, Cowboy Christmas, man, it is, that is a mouthful, but anyways, that having an extra day but what about if nfr decided to change the time of the start of nfr Uh, oh yeah earlier whoa what about an hour early yes oh my gosh yeah so the wrangler national finals rodeo will start at 5 45 p.m that's a lot what does that do for your liver (laughs) that might affect your liver more but it also Cut affects your fine. <laughs> it also affects those on the East Coast who will be viewing it on the Cowboy Channel and have the opportunity to watch it at a very decent time. That's awesome. Yeah. The potential for that when you think about that just that shift, right? Just for the folks that come here, I, I really think it's more of that that there's a lot of things that we can make, right? The points of why this is great. But when have all those events that take place afterwards and having the time to get to them and and all the movement that goes on in Vegas but even if you want to make it to the shows now you should be able to make just about every concert that happens on the strip which I, it's cool man I and mean, you go to a rodeo and then maybe go see George Strait or you I mean like you now have the opportunity to do both yeah without ru- like running people over or you know um just you don't have to rush, right? You can take your yeah. time for the entire day. I mean, awesome. Well, I mean, it's going to be tough for you, man, for bring for Junior World Finals, though, right? You're, I mean, how's well, that going to work out, brother? Steve will be fine because we'll be starting him nice and early in the morning. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know that Steve actually knew about that, but I do think the arena starts a little earlier. What's a little? Because you know me, I don't like to be running over. I'd rather finish a little early or push back my start time if we finish too early. Running over? That's how I'm going to feel every day when I wake up. Like I got That's, runned over. Well, maybe give your liver a break and go to bed early. Sorry, you'll be done by four. Okay. So, well, therefore, you can go take a nap dude, and then go out and party. What do they call it? A cowboy nap? Mm. 
No, we just call them naps. Oh, there's no cowboy nap? I don't think so. Like Canadian goose, it's just a goose. Correct. But I mean, it, technically in Vegas in December, that'd be called a cowboy nap because you're going to need it, right? I mean, if yeah. you, you do date, well, you're not doing day drinking, but maybe. It, it might be in his Yeti cup. Don't judge my Yeti. <laughs> do I need to sniff the cup every morning? At your own at your own risk. You said it right, dude. When you think about the one up situation, you're right. Not only did we come out with one thing, two things, three th- three things that impact just about anything the contestant side, right? The dirt, and you got the shopping or the experience side, of Cowboy Christmas, and then just the fan themselves. I'm excited about that time. I mean, I'm excited about the Wednesday thing, but that's just that one shot. But like, dude, the time yeah. is like when we got off on Sundays on that last tenth day. That it just I don't know why. I mean. Cause I've been doing NFR since 2000, or I'm sorry, since 1999. And when we got off on Sunday, it seemed shorter. Still 10 days, but starting on Thursday and ending on Saturday. I don't know why, but that Sunday on the 10th day was took forever, or even to get to that point. Complaining, whatever, I don't know, but I don't care. But, but yeah, this time thing, this is, it's nice, man. For all involved. Well, and I think the bigger picture of it is if you think about the ability, you now have the option to go shopping during the day. You can go to this rodeo and you can still book reservations Mm -hmm. in Vegas for a 1030 dinner, like, and have time to get there. Like, that's kind of crazy to think about eating dinner at 1030 to the normal person. But in Vegas, to be able to secure that at a nice restaurant, like, those are still real types that you can go to these restaurants and it just opens each and every opportunity for you to go to those awesome concerts that all of our hotel partners put on. It gives you opportunity to get to these after parties that have live music. It really opens up your ability to see every element of what the NFR experience is. Instead of, hey, I gotta go to the rodeo tonight and by the time you get out of the Thomas and Mac or whatever it is, like maybe the after party's You're almost done. over. Yeah. yeah, you're done. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're working against the clock, man. I mean, even for someone like Steve, right? You talk about things that if you got to get up early and do things, the fact that you have that balance, right? Just that hour makes a huge difference. Um, just to enjoy, and you get to, man, Vegas, right? About that, that kind of that, what is it, that evening hour, that's time, right? Around, right around eight ish going into 10 ish is some of the best times you'll ever have in Vegas, man. And then you, you too, for those that just pull it all nighter, fine. But at least you still can recover in time to do it again the next day. You get a 10, man. You know, probably stay until maybe two, depending on who you hang out with or whatever that throws down. But yeah, man, you're right. We won up to it a couple of times, triple times. Three times, three times the charm. Yeah, I mean, well, and not only that, it's something out of our control, but it's the, you know, the other added resorts that you know, I know, Brian, you work with, with Virgin, right? Resorts World. Just a fabulous place, by the way. Beautiful property. Yes. It's, there's a doghouse in there that's quite the... I, I don't want to compare it to anything because it really doesn't compare to anything. It has every element that you can imagine in a sports book, but maybe a small concert venue. It's something you just got to go check out. Yeah, Steve, you'll like it, man. Super open. It's very accessible. I don't want to oversell it. Like, it's a really cool, legit place to go watch for country music and what they're going to be doing, it's going to be perfect for the rodeo fan. And it, and it won't look like it too either, right? Because you got this place that's so extravagant, it's all red, got video boards on the, on the side of the hotel. But so you get to that place, I mean, everyone's going to know everybody there. I mean, it's going to be legit. I mean, it's a whole new playground for the rodeo fan, the Vegas fan, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, man, we got a lot going on. Plus, the Raiders will be in town playing Washington. I think the night schedule just came out, and I think we got two games, maybe three during that that run. So I think there's, you know, obviously we got George Strait coming. We have Dirk Bentley. We have Jason Aldean. We have Cody Johnson or Cosmo. I mean, it, it, there's there's a lot going on. A lot. Yeah. Well, that's a cool thing. It's, you know, you can try to kill yourself to do all of it, but you can definitely do a lot of things yeah. and make it legit. I don't know how you do 10 days though. That is. I know what it's like to work for that 15 days craziness, right? Could you imagine staying in Vegas for 10 full days and just enjoying it? Like the party side of it, the event side of it, the concert side of it. Like 
to be the consumer. That, that's some work there in itself as well. There's a lot of it. You, you better be a good planner, right? Because if, man, you mess up your first few days, you're messing up the rest of the week, right? Just, just yeah. everybody working it. But. I'm planning on sleeping in. <laughs> Enjoy our conversation with Ryder and Stetson Wright on NFR Extra. In Las Vegas, December can only mean one thing. The Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. The NFR is the culmination for the top contestants in the world seeking to share the $10 million purse and the coveted gold buckle. For fans, Las Vegas transforms into the greatest Western party in the world with the NFR experience, which features Cowboy Christmas, the Junior World Finals, nonstop entertainment, custom viewing parties, and so much more. Follow all the action at nfrexperience.com. Great moments, great champions, great memories. There's only one NFR. There is only one Vegas. Joe Frost joining you on NFR Extra. Like his legendary Milford, Utah, bronc riding family, Ryder Wright has done it the right way. While those terms are interchangeable when describing championship bronc riding, the result for this family always seems to be the same, holding up a gold buckle. Wright has qualified for the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo every year since winning the 2016 PRCA Resistall Rookie of the Year for saddle bronc riding. Following his breakout rookie year, he would catapult the next generation of Wrights into the spotlight by winning his first world championship. Ryder would go on to grabbing his second gold buckle in 2020. Two times in his career, Wright either has won outright or split first and five go rounds at the Super Bowl of Rodeos, equaling the NFR record. He joins an elite group with Billy Epauer and Dan Mortensen as the only other Bronc riders to win five go rounds Ryder Wright, thank you for coming on Extra. How you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, we are good, man. We're here with uh, your bro, rest of the champs, Legacy Club, Circa, overlooking Las Vegas. How's it feel to be right now in um, Las Vegas? I know we're early, but how's it feel to be here right now? Feels good to be back. I feel like I ain't been here in a while, but I'm ready to be back here for real in December. Yeah. yeah you, you seem all focused, man. Like yeah, It's really... like you want to get here quick. Yeah. For sure. How, how is, how's everything going this year? You know, we went to Bizarro World last year, uh, where everything ended up, how it started, began, whatever. How's everything going for you right now? Like, how are you feeling midway through this this year? I feel good. Um, everything's been good. You know, I've been been pretty lucky this year on the drawn side of things. Uh, oh, feeling good. Ready for more. Nice. Um, what do you got going on coming up? Are you are you guys riding all together for this whole rest of the year from now until December, or how's uh, it work for you? Me and Stetson will probably go until uh, sometime in July. I think he's going to start entering with Kai Hamilton. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think I might jump in with Rusty and Spencer and Jesse just because it's a little bit easier for him to go with a bull rider because there's a lot more extreme bulls. Uh, and so that kind of messes with the entering. With, yeah, with entering. It yeah, makes yeah. it hard to where, you know, there's not as many extreme broncs, so it won't mess the the bull riding side of things up very bad. So, Do you guys, okay, so <clears throat> knowing that happens, I mean, obviously, as I've experienced you guys at the NFR, and I mean, as Andy Siler was imitating you guys, you guys are like in each other's corner. How does that work when he's all by himself? I mean, how are you guys t- like texting back and forth, calling each other, and kind of just staying in touch? How does that work? Oh yeah, we watch. You know, if we're driving down the road, headed to to a rodeo, and he's uh, entered somewhere, just like uh, we were headed to Course Gold for that Veter Financial Bronc match last weekend, or this, yeah, last weekend. Anyway, Stetson was in Del Rio, Texas, and we had the iPad. I was watching him in Del Rio, so you know we're always. Always there, one way or another. That's awesome. That Veter deal has kind of turned into a pretty cool little bronc match, it yeah. seems like. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I'd seen videos of that place before, but I didn't realize until you get up there, you know, he's, he's like, really up in the mountains. Nowhere. You know, yeah. 
there ain't a flat spot up there. Yeah. Except for his, his arena sits in his house. Yeah. It's awesome. Where it's been cut out. Yeah. So you've been, the Wright family in Las Vegas is kind of dominated on the saddle bronc riding side and now, you know, kind of making some waves in the bull riding side as well. But is there, if there was a one NFR moment, be it from your career or from growing up and watching family compete here, what's the NFR moment that sticks out the most in your mind here in Las Vegas? Uh, walking into the Thomas and Mac for my first time, being here with my dad. I think yeah. that was, I don't think anything will ever beat that. That's insane. And what was, was that cool. like? That was awesome. You know, I've, I grew up coming here watching him. Yeah. You know, and I've wanted to be here. You know, I never really thought I'd be here with him. So to be able to walk through those, down through that tunnel with him, that was pretty cool. Did that give you like a sense of confidence? Like, or, I mean, it's almost like, you know, dad's been here so many times and then, you know, watching him compete, it's like that could go one of two ways. Either this is confidence or it's like, crap, yeah. I'm also riding against my dad. Yeah. I, I, yeah. A little bit of both. You yeah. Know, there's a, it was, I don't know. I always feel a little bit more comfort, you know, when, when you got people like that yeah. there with you, you know, they've been there for forever since you started riding and to have them at the biggest stage in rodeo right there in your ear yeah. it's awesome so did your dad give you like any words of advice or wisdom or was it just like hey this is up to you now oh well, yeah just he kept telling me you know just treat it like it's any other rodeo because it is really yeah you know there's there's more lights and fans and you know but at the end of it you're trying to do the same thing you've been trying to do all year whether yes. it's whether it's in the practice pen or in the Thomas and Mac. Yeah. What makes the National Finals Rodeo so unique in Las Vegas? It's uh, the atmosphere, you know, the the people, you know, they're, it's like, it's a smaller building, you know, so everybody's sitting right on top of you and everybody's into it, you know, like in Texas, in that, uh, the stadium, yeah. it was, it's so big. You know, there was probably a lot of people there, but it's so big, it didn't feel like anybody was even there. Yeah. You know, you can't hear them cheering, really. But here, you know, they're right there in your ear. It's yeah. it's awesome. That's like a Thomas Mac. It's like a, almost like with one of those bullhorns, like yeah. right in your face, like, come on! Yeah, you know, pretty mean, much. You, you yeah. got it. You're like, oh, I'm trying! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that's badass. Let's pause for a quick break with two-time world champion Saddle Bronc Rider, Rider Right. After the break... We will wrap up our conversation. NFR Extra follows cowboys, talks to legends and country stars, and finds the stories that make up the season that leads to the annual showdown in December. Follow me, Nevada Caldwell, Ryland Bentley, and Steve Goder as we delve deep into the stories in and behind the road to gold. Listen to NFR Extra on Rural Radio, Channel 147 on Sirius XM every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, with a re-air Tuesday in the same time slot. NFR Extra, all dirt, all rodeo, all year. Hello, everyone. This is Hunter Cure, two-time world champion steer wrestler, and I'm here on the NFR Extra podcast. Here on NFR Extra with Ryder Wright. Coming here to Vegas, again, you spent, you know, the majority of your life here um, coming to this rodeo, cheering on family, cheering on friends. Now that you've been a world champion and qualified many times in the NFR, how do you avoid the distractions? And focus on rodeo. Oh shoot! You know, I've never really had too big of a problem avoid uh, staying away from that kind of stuff. You know, I got married really young. I had a kid when I was in 2017, so that was my second year. You know, and I've I don't know. I've tried to um, just keep my head on straight. You know, I've got bigger bigger goals than going out and partying. Yeah. And, you know, I I got a family to take care of, so I'm trying. I don't know. Try and take care of business first. Yeah. yeah. How old were you, man, at that time? In 2017, yeah. I was 20... Early 20s. Man. 19. 19. 19, 20, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's, man, that's... Yeah. That, I don't know about you, Steve, but that's a whole other level of commitment. I wasn't ready to have no. children until I was in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever really ready. Yeah. True, true. Yeah, you just yes. do it. Yeah. 100%. And when it happens, then you're like, all right. But, yeah, that's a pretty mature stance, too. And, I mean, that as far as your focus, that's 
kind of proof is in the pudding on that deal. Like, man, I'm, you know, all that stuff is pretty secondary and it'd be real easy to slip on that banana peel yeah. and take a fall if you're getting off track. Yeah. So. I want to ask them, so actually, how do you guys take care of yourselves? I mean, is there a regimen that the rights do together? Because, I mean, Pops rode for a good long and, and did well. What's the secret in the sauce, man? You guys all look great. You're all health. Well, you can only be as healthy as you can be in the rodeo industry. But what do you do to, to, to stay healthy? You know, we'll exercise when we can. You know, like we take the bands and the perfect push-ups with us and stuff like that. But you know, I don't. I don't really do a whole lot of working out. <laughs> There's no secret. You know, my wife. My wife does a lot of working out. She's tried to talk me into it, but it's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, mom's mom's cooking is what it seems yeah, like. Right. The, this, Which the is the next question? To being a champion, <laughs> yeah, is mom's cooking. It is actually. What's your favorite restaurant in Las Vegas? Though you said you may not have one, so let's go with what is your favorite dish your mom makes? Spaghetti. I'm going to say spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds good right now. That does sound yeah. good right now. <laughs> yeah. Though we're going to have some steaks tonight down at Barry's. Those are going to be pretty amazing too. I'm excited. Yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to ask him this. All right. This is, this, this is this is someone who's been coming with your dad, and you got some moments that you can you can dis, to decide from here. But what's a moment you saw someone else experience that you've been a part of? You there's a few that you can pick from here that you saw them, whether it be your brother win a world title, dad. What's a moment you walk away with that you're glad you got to experience it? Shit. And don't all, say all. Don't all say all. No, uh, no. I don't know. Yeah, my him winning the his world titles, you know, being there. And my dad being winning his, you know, I don't know, just just being there, being yeah. part of, I don't know, of pe- other people's big moments, you know. It's kind of hard to explain. No, 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 man. It's a, But, I mean, you... You've got a unique situation. I don't think there's too many other rodeo athletes that have the the, the central core of your family and how you guys all have accomplished, unless I'm missing yeah. something, y'all. I mean, that's... Yeah. Well, that's what's crazy, too, is, again, looking at the saddle bronc riding to where the rights are in there, you know, dad, brothers, uncles, that sort of a thing is like, that's a pretty big group to be cheering for, but that's also got to be the motivation of like, all right, like, I mean, that's the iron sharpens iron. Like, this yeah. is this is who we are and this is what we do. Yeah. And, you know, when words are resist, all we live it every day. Yeah. <laughs> and that's no joke. Like you're saying, man, going home and we're going to go brand after. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. that's that's the no joke cowboy stuff. So, yeah. How does it feel with I just want to focus on your family a little bit because you get a lot of spotlight on you, man. I, 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 I read, you know, a lot of good articles about your family. That, how is how does that feel for you? I mean, is there some sort of retrospect that you see this in and where Everyone wants to get a part of the right family and understand how you guys function. Uh, it's not bad, you know. I I don't really like this stuff that much, you yeah. know. I'd rather be home right now, doing my own thing. But <laughs> what but, you is know, your own thing, though? What would you yeah. rather be doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I like to like break colts. I have I have a couple of horses that I'm riding right now, you know. You know, help my dad with cows. You know, spending time with my wife and my little girl. Yeah. How, how old's your little girl now? She'll be four in July. Oh, well, that's pretty cool yeah. age. Yeah. yeah, she's fun. Yeah. yeah. Smart ass is what she is. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably has you whipped, oh, too. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing something that small can be that. Like, I yeah. mean, my daughter says that. She goes, Daddy. I'm like, whatever you want. Yeah. Right, whatever. Yeah. Cool. yeah. With that being said, wanting to be back home cowboying and with the family and everything, when you come to Vegas and it's absolute go time, is there a song? that like you kind of that if you hear it you're like all right we're gunning it here we're riding bronx viva las vegas viva las vegas nice, that a boy yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Answer. solid work nice i That's like rodeo that time yeah. as soon yeah. as you it hear is. that in thomas and mac you hear the concourse to shuffle yeah rushing the seats yeah you know it's your time yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah the the hard thing about these guys like i mean nice sweet young kid and he's got these piercing blue eyes that look it's like I feel like a part of my soul is being taken <laughs> yeah, right? when this kid's like game time I'm like yeah no it's game time let him go let him go it's game time that's oh, awesome man if you had to work but did not need the money what would you do break horses ride 
horses. It's fun. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not too far off of what I'm doing. Yeah, and it's... I just... Stetson had a guy tell him the other day, it's like you're trying to teach him a foreign language. And, I don't know. It's kind of cool just to be able to start from nothing. Mm. You know, I'm not that great at it, but it's fun to me. I'm yeah. learning. There's a lot of uh, self-revelation that takes place with colts, too, to where, like... Yes. You get in something, you're like, maybe this isn't the horse. Maybe I'm doing something yeah. here. Oh, yeah, for sure. I know you got to take a different approach with every horse. You know, they're just like people. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well. Man. I, man, Ryder, thank you for coming on, man. Yeah. I, I get it. You know, there's certain people that don't want to do things but just do what they love. And and this has got to be tough, man, the, the spotlight of things when where you guys are at and you're so good, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of almost like a... Uh, give and take yeah right like it just puts you in that that world but well you got a good brother well that I've, I've, yeah. I've met your rest of your brothers but man I just from what I see you guys got yeah. some, some blessed stuff going on there man. yeah it's very lucky to be part of this family yeah yeah that's awesome man yeah. well we're excited to have the rights back in Las Vegas in December and good luck this season thank you I appreciate it awesome yeah. thank you man it was awesome brother. thank you much thank right you right right yeah. ladies and gentlemen In Las Vegas, December becomes Cowboy Town. The Wrangler National Finals Rodeo is the prize for the top contestants in the world seeking a share of the $10 million purse and the coveted gold buckle. For the fans, Las Vegas transforms into the greatest Western party in the world with the NFR experience featuring Cowboy Christmas, the Junior World Finals, nonstop entertainment, custom viewing parties, and so much more. Follow all the action at NFRexperience.com. There is only one NFR. There is only one Vegas. Hi, this is Patrick Gotch, joining you on NFR Extra. Stetson Wright proved why he's one of the best all-around Cowboys in pro rodeo at the 2020 Wrangler NFR, winning the all-around title for the second year in a row, plus adding a bull riding championship. At 21 years of age, Stetson has accomplished more than most Cowboys will in their entire careers. As a member of the Wright family, Stetson was raised around champions. His father, Cody, is a two-time world champion saddlebonk rider, along with his brother, Ryder, who added two more gold buckles to the family legacy, winning in 2017 and 2020. That's not all. Uncle Jesse and Spencer each hold saddlebonk world championships as well. In 2021, it is more of the same for Stetson as he prepares to make his third Wrangler National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas. Stetson Wright, welcome to NFR Extra, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, how's this feeling in Vegas right now? You're at the Legacy Club, Circa, overlooking that view right there. How's it feel to be here in Vegas right now? It's pretty sweet. I'm glad I'm glad to be back here. Um, Texas was fun, but Vegas is funner. <laughs> well said. Man. Vegas is funner. <laughs> I've lived by that motto. <laughs> So, all right, look, man, I know you were talking about this earlier. You don't know what you're going to be doing tomorrow. But as far as your, your, your rodeo is going right now, how is 2021 going right now? Uh, I thought 2019 was the greatest year, and I never thought I could top it. But the way 2021 started, um, I'm starting to eat my words. This has been between both events. I've just felt like I'm, I found my groove, my confidence level, my health. Just everything this year has just been everything I could ask for. Yeah. It's, well, obviously shows in the world standings. <laughs> That's all right. All three time. Yeah. Being here in Vegas, man, you've had an opportunity, like, growing up, right? So you were here in Vegas before you were qualifying for Vegas. But including your career, is there a particular moment at the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo here in Las Vegas that stood out to you that was either like, man, I've made it, or that's what I want to do? Uh, definitely when Rusty and Ryder both made the NFR with my dad, that was something I always wanted to do, which I, I never got the chance, but uh, in 2019, when I made it with them here, even though I was just in the bull riding, that was pretty sweet, but last year was definitely pretty special because I made the bronc riding alongside those two and it was pretty special to me and hopefully we can do it again this year 
that's unreal, man. That is so cool. That's pretty soon. It's going to be like the saddle bronc riding and probably the bull riding. It's just going to be rights. It's just a matter of which right is in which ranking. That's awesome. Hey, speaking of your, your brothers, like, I don't, I, do you guys, is there a lot of competition at home with y'all? Cause you guys are fierce competitors in the rodeo industry. Uh, yeah, there's competition at home. I mean, we all tease each other that we're going to win, but at the end of the day, when we get off and we go back to the shoot, we, we want them to win too. So, I mean, it's, we, we all want to win, but we all want each other to win too. Yeah. So it's hard to say. Yeah. You want them to win like second and third. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you do good, man. Yeah. I'm not, I hope me. you're at least 89 and a half. <laughs> yeah. What makes the NFR unique in Las Vegas compared to the other rodeos throughout the year? Uh, I've, I've been going to the NFR here in Vegas since 2003. I haven't missed a round or anything. And this is just the home I feel like at the NFR. I, I think it should stay here forever. The Texas was a cool experience, but as far as Vegas goes, it everything's right on top of each other. Like, if you want to go hang out, it's walking distance and then... Everything's just right on top of each other here in Vegas, which I think is pretty awesome. Yeah. What's it like? What's it like being in the Thomas and Mac? Oh, uh, it's it's hard to explain, and I mean, it's definitely undescribable. The feeling of like you can feel the fans breathing down your neck compared to when you were in Texas. It was everything was kind of spread out in that yeah. big building, where here it's. I really couldn't explain it, even if I tried. It's something you'd have to experience, I guess, yeah. to even know what I'm talking about. But don't Vegas. let the looks fool you. I'm not a bull rider, so I'm not. I'm never going to experience <laughs> it. Other than cheering for you guys, I'm never going to experience it. Yeah, and definitely in the stands, all the years that I was sitting there, I thought by the time I made it, I wouldn't have the nerves or anything. But from the stands down to when you're about to take the flag horse whatever yeah. down through the grand entry your butterflies goosebumps everything you can think of are through the roof and i was when i got back to the locker room i was trying not to puke my first round in 2019 <laughs> but and it never i never got used to it throughout the all 10 rounds like really? every night was the same like and it was the greatest feeling ever i know i was about yeah. to puke but it's like a heightened sense of awareness. It's just the pregame jitters, man. Yeah, it's like jumping out of a helicopter, I guess, or a plane. Yeah, yeah. Which you'll be on a helicopter, but just don't, don't capitalize. Jump. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't jump. Don't, don't jump, jump out of this yeah. one, please. I won't do it. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of distractions in Vegas, right? I mean, and there's and you guys, there's so much um, extra stuff put on you guys. You got to be signing autographs. You have sponsorship obligations. So how do you stay focused through all of that? So with that, I, um, as much as we all want to sit in the room, relax all 10 days, when we go out and we're visiting with people, signing autographs, doing everything that is all the fun stuff, it honestly takes your mind off of what you're supposed to do that night, which I guess it can either hurt you or help you. And I feel like it helps us because yeah. we, don't, we don't think about the horse or bull we got drawn that night. We just show up and do our job and then go to sleep and start it all over. Yeah, I'd imagine, like, it, yeah, I I think I'd put it this way, right? Like, you wouldn't want to be sitting just in a room all day, your mind just constantly filtering through what you're going to do that night. So, yeah, yeah probably the more distractions, maybe the better a little bit. Yeah, even if they're good thoughts, like, you still, Yeah. I don't know. When when I sit in a room or a place too long and start thinking about things, I, I go crazy. So, going out here in Vegas, signing autographs, hanging out with the fans, it's... It's a great time and keeps my mind off the stuff that I got to do that night. This is NFR Extra with our guest, three-time world champ Stetson Wright. We will go to a quick break and then return to close out our conversation. Looking for tickets to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo? StubHub is the official secondary and fan-to-fan site of the rodeo. Fans can buy and sell their tickets through a safe and secure online marketplace. Visit nfrexperience.com. I'm Casey Field, five-time world champion bareback rider, and I am on NFR Extra. We are here 
on NFR Extra with Stetson Wright. You're still young, but in your younger, younger life, do you remember coming to the NFR? Like, is there a memory that kind of sticks out a little bit coming here? Yeah, all of them really. I, I don't know the both years my dad won the world. I was eight and ten years old when he won it, and them years stand out to me just because I don't know the world title that he won just was so special to everybody in the family, and it was just and then the well both of them were really just awesome. Yeah. But did it plant a seed in your head to like? Because I'd imagine for some some uh, young people, it's that's intimidating. But for you, it's clearly had not been the case. I mean, yeah, well, it is intimidating, like because when you go up against like Rusty Ryder, like the top bronc riders in the world, and then Sage Kimsey, all them great bull riders, it is intimidating. But at the end of the day, I'm not competing against them. I'm competing against the bull and horse under me and uh, I mean it makes it special when and when you're going against the top guys in the world especially like those guys I, they probably think the same thing though yeah. now, man. but <laughs> one of the crazy things too like a lot of the guys that have been dominant in the all around competition have been timed event guys and so really you haven't seen a standout in the rough stock um, competing actively that has been aggressive for the all around I mean Ty Murray sticks out to mind how much more difficult is it to prepare for multiple rough stock events on that physically on that side? Well, the the physical side from time event to rough stock, I've never been able to explain it because I don't. I guess I don't calf rope, team rope, yeah, steer rope, whatever, yeah, all that. So I I can't speak for those guys, but I guess when. Stuff goes bad in rough stock. It hurts yeah. really bad. I don't, but I can't talk for them because it might hurt just as bad yeah. in their deal. But I mean, it's just something that I've grown up doing. And I mean, I, I never get used to getting hurt. I don't think anybody does. And but yeah, I can't really. That's a hard question for me to answer because I I don't want to speak for yeah, those guys. But well, but phys- I guess what I'm saying is like physically, you're gonna go. I mean, a lot of these guys. You look at the one event rough stock guys, and you look at how physically taxed they are come round eight nine and ten on one event and then you've got two events and you've got two events i mean so you're riding double the animals on that but that's got to be i would think that it's almost like the saddle bronc riding is just warming up for the bull riding well that was the thing for me i think i was getting on my horse and then i was warmed up on bull riding i was loose i mean i think depending on how your nfr starts is how you're gonna feel going throughout it and mine started pretty good in both events last year and it kind of just rolled through and whenever I got like banged up in the bronc ride and I'd get on my bull and if I do good like the pain would go away and I wouldn't think about it and stuff would just keep rolling and I I told everybody before the NFR it's either going to be the best NFR or I'm going to be a hurting sucker man yeah go back to your Correct me if I'm wrong. You had, was it your jaw? What happened that first run that you had? Because that probably has helped you add how you deal with injury. Because was it your jaw shut or what was that injury all about? Yeah, in uh, Dodge City, Kansas in 2019, I just came off the win in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I was number one in the world in the all around, number one in the world in the bull riding. I would just moved into the top 15. I was like 13 in the world in the bronc riding. I was just finally finding my groove in the bronc riding and I went to Dodge City and I had this bull I rode him and won the round but my get off I my hands uh, hung in my rope for just a second and his horn came up under my mm. face mask and shattered my jaw in five different places knocked my four bottom teeth out and I mean at the time I was I I probably should have handled it a little different I was more so playing the poor picked on me card and around my house, that don't fly. Like, <laughs> my dad put an end to it, and he said, you'll understand why it happened in the end. And at the time, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, what what am I going to understand from this? Well, in 2019, when I walked out of the NFR holding that gold buckle the all around, I, I knew exactly what he was talking about, and it, it made it that much more special to win just because it wasn't just – a perfect season there was trials yeah. and errors and injuries yeah. it was it was all worth it That's, i mean it's not cool that you got an injury but it's cool that that manifested in that way yeah man 
that's impressive. That's like the thing too is it's you know it's easy to perform when everything goes right, but when you have adversities like that and then you overcome them and then that's the end result, it's just you know, and your dad amongst everybody else obviously knows that. So that's that's awesome to have that foresight of somebody that's been dead there. And it's like, hey man. Shake yeah, it up. Buckle up, man. Yeah. yeah, I don't care if you're yeah. sipping through a straw oh, right you, now. What? You lost four <laughs> teeth? You're fine. Yeah. He had some sympathy over the injury, just not my attitude. <laughs> <laughs> You've been making your way to Las Vegas since 2003. One of the adversities people deal with is choosing where to go to dinner. Where is your favorite place to eat in Las Vegas? I like the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> but I, honestly, I don't get out much. We've a lot of times we've just rented houses mm. so my mom was cooking so nice. that's my favorite place when my mom cooks mom's there's kitchen your mom we love you mom. mom's kitchen yeah hi mom <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> throughout all of the adversities the championships and everything and of course you've young in your career developing on that but like if you could put a song that would say like hey you hear this song you know i'm in the house you got one in mind uh sell like, say oh man dump yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's exactly that my song. Bum, 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 bum. I can't do it, but yeah, I get you. I, I probably <laughs> ruined it right there and we edit that out, but yeah, they, that like, that's awesome, dude. In the round eight or nine, I was 93 and a half. Well, I had Ooh. this bull in the chute in 2019 that was bucking around, smashed me, and I crawled up out of the chute because he squished my ankles and my knees yeah. and all that good stuff. And I like got up out of the chute and I was sitting on the chute, and then all of a sudden I just hear it start playing. Oh. And then I got down there and ended up being 93 and a half and probably Suck. made one of my best rides that ever. That is awesome. Power of the mind, man. That yeah. is awesome. All right, so sail. We've got it. Yeah. You listening, uh, NFR sound guy? Yeah, when, uh, whoever you might yeah, be. Yeah, right? <laughs> Mr. Wright when he's riding? Yeah. It's a great jam. If you had to work but you didn't need the money, what would you do? Uh, can't say can't say bull riding or saddle bronc riding can't say rodeo if i had to work didn't need the money that's a question that's the hard I'd... thing because cowboys it's like if you're yeah. if you're on a roll it's like just being it's like, cowboy i don't <laughs> yeah well no i wouldn't even want to be a like ranching yeah <laughs> that's hard work that, that's the harder yeah, work that's than rodeo so. damn near for free too <laughs> yeah Ugh. yeah tough yeah. question i honestly probably should think about that yeah. <laughs> from the man that says i don't know what i'm doing tomorrow you gotta call my agent yeah yeah that's my mom yeah that's my mom. she'll tell me what to do All there right. you go that's awesome oh, man. man that's too good that's man. cool does it feel good being here in vegas and looking out yeah and especially when i got here and i not hardly anybody was wearing masks that's the yeah. best thing i've seen yeah <laughs> yes are they pretty tight on that back home or is it pretty loose no it it was never from when they shut the world down till now, yeah, I don't think we've worn masks. Yeah, that's kind of how Dylan Montana is too. Yeah, so. Utah was test. with Texas and the whole shebang. Yeah. Well, hey, before we let you go, I like, could you share that experience? Because you were competing in that PBR event almost about a year ago this time, right? The Didn't teams it? event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There at South Point. What was that like here coming to Vegas? Right, like, was there? What was that experience like? I mean, riding in the PBR, it was fun, but like. It was kind of a bad experience if it's your first one. Like, I, they did a good job setting everything up. Everything was good, but it was ride your bulls, go back to your room. You yeah. can't leave. We'll bring food to you. You stay there. Oh, wow. And then it was... Oh, I mean, no mom's kitchen. Yeah, it was... Yeah. They, they tried to make it as good as they yeah. could with yeah. what they had to deal with. A bit bizarre, though, huh? Like, what, what you were used to coming here and how that was, man. Yeah. Yeah. 365 days ago about that time. Thank gosh. Yeah. Vegas is back. We are open and ready for a Wrangler National yes. Finals Rodeo. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Wright, uh, thank you for joining us, man. This is uh, it's been great talking to you, man. you got to come back on. we got to get you back on again. Heck, yeah. I'd love to come back. Four yeah. and five. We could double up those championship buckles, too. Just go for four and five this year. Hopefully we get six. Six. Say, Let's go six, six yeah. Whatever, hey, eight, six, Whatever, yeah, six man. is fine. Double, yeah. we'll double up. All Keep right. them coming. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Thank you. Awesome, appreciate you, man. Yeah, dude. Thank See you. you back here in uh, December. Sounds good. All right, Stetson.
we want to thank brothers Ryder and Stetson Wright for kicking it with us on NFR Extra. Want to experience more of NFR? Then visit nfrexperience.com. And we invite you to subscribe to NFR Extra on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you're listening right now. If you like what you've heard on NFR Extra, we would love it if you gave us a big five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe. NFR Extra. All dirt. All rodeo. All year. Gotta make it out to Vegas, where the big boys roam. With the Rovers and the Racers and the Bulls and the Browns. And the ladies in the skin-tight ringers. 